you're ready to start today. To start, how was your day yesterday? Was it productive? There were a lot of, of uh, thoughts, a lot of background thinking, a lot of very high picture and all the way down to the very low, uh, we have to do this tomorrow thing. <laughs> Uh, I think it was an interesting day with a lot of perspectives. Uh, just a short, uh, we're going to give you some short brief summary of what we think was said yesterday. For instance, David talked about, uh, we've come to see money as holy and life as tradable good. Um, and he's, he argued that we need to see life as holy and money as means, not the other way around. Helena talked among many other things, and I, I mean, this is really a short thing. Um, that we've come to regulate the global, sorry, we need to regulate the global and deregulate the local. We've created too much freedom for capital movement and over-regulated the local. Quite a high-level um, approach. Jürgen, on our video link, talked about how we need to take responsibility for our own life locally, together. Uh, neither the market nor the state has the answer, but the collective local. Do you remember what he said as he told us to turn our back to market and to, uh, to the state. Uh, Stan, among many other things, uh, believe we, want, we need to strive for freedom. Freedom from debt, subsidies and waste and injustice, and a freedom to a full life, including head, heart and hand. What was that? Head, heart and hand. Oh, that's a good movement. Come on, like, like a morning movement. Head, heart and hand. Come on. Head, heart and hand. I didn't hear it. Head, heart, and hands. Oh, there you go. Um, and then we have Anna. We had Anna, uh, one of our researchers, arguing that uh, we need to look for a broader multifunctionality of the agriculture, but of the rural area as a whole, a need for a diversified rural labor market. And Radar, among many other things, argued that, um, or a, an interpreter of it is that, is we need investments to create jobs in local areas, and we need strong rural clusters or strong rural clusters can reach global success. Uh, so those were some of the, of the findings from, from uh, did you? Oh, you're still searching. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ilva. Okay. Um, sorry. But uh, yesterday was one day of work, and we've had several other days of works during this spring, the local economy days. Yeah. So when I don't work at uh, the Swedish University for Agricultural Sciences, I work at the NGO called Hela Sverige ska leva, All Sweden shall live. And uh, we've been for 11 years now together with all these different actors. Uh, we've been organizing something that we call the Local Economy Days. And uh, uh, maybe you saw this uh, out on the table there. It's a documentation from uh, this year's Local Economy Days. Um, and it's a meeting place uh, for debate, exchange of knowledge and uh, experience in local economy. And this year we organized four regional conferences. We saw it like a, some kind of Swedish pre-conferences to this one, even though the, the ministers see, see this conference as a pre-conference to, to their meeting. Uh, yeah, and we invited researchers, authorities, banks, associations and uh, NGOs, businesses. And these are some of our uh, conclusions. Yeah, it's getting increasingly difficult to get a traditional bank loan, especially in rural areas. I don't know if you watched the YouTube videos that we put up some days ago. And um, Michaela Backman is a researcher who shown that... Um, <coughs> ...that uh, since 1993, 1993 um, half of the bank branches in rural areas has uh, moved away or shut down. And um, one economist claimed that all banking is local, uh, meaning that um, 
the banker's knowledge about the local market conditions is crucial for access to financial capital. And when the banks move away, they don't know the entrepreneurs and they don't uh, know the market conditions and they're less willing to, to give a loan. So local savings banks still play an important role. Uh, and also we have some cooperative uh, banks in Sweden. And even though they are not local players, uh, they know the, the social economy quite well. So um, for that area, they, they are very important. Another conclusion was that the attitudes uh, among officials is very important for the local economy. Helpfulness, an open mind, uh, entrepreneurial spirit among officials uh, can really be a key factor for, for local success. And we've seen that there is a lack of research about the local economy. There is more and more research about the regional economy, but uh, for us that's not really the same. And a lack of researchers, of course. Yeah, but on the other hand, hand <laughs> something uh, positive that we've seen on these meetings is that rural people are creating a new diversified structure for local financing. Um, and that helps to strengthen the local community and uh, give a lot of different social side effects. And loads of different examples are popping up all over the country. Just a few examples that we won't hear today, but um, there, this is a woman from Jämtland, um, this area where we are now. Um, she's the head of Vindpenning in Abia, which is a local venture capital firm, uh, which use um, the return from locally owned wind power, and they combine it with some um, public venture capital to and give out uh, loans and such to, to local businesses. Here's another example, uh, also from nearby. Uh, 20 farmers have started their own savings association, saving together and deciding together who, who will get the loan. And I'll just mention some, some debates also. We don't always think exactly the same. And uh, one important discussion has been about why are we promoting local economy? Is it to enhance growth or is it to create a sustainable economy beyond growth, post-growth? The later argument, uh, one of the arguments for the for later is that since uh, the use of fossil fuels and uh, growth is so interconnected. Uh, peak oil also means peak growth. And a discussion that we also had uh, yesterday, I think you could hear that the lectures had some different perspectives. Who's responsible uh, for creating vibrant local economies? Is it the consumers or the producers or is it the public authorities, maybe politicians? And there are different solutions depending on your approach. And we also, we, we tried to ask the participants at these uh, local economy days if they had a message to, uh, to the Nordic ministers. And there were, of course, uh, plenty of ideas. But these were some. This is very basic. To just ensure that the basic structures uh, for rural development is there. Just service schools, broadband, all these things that people in the city just uh, count on. We think that rural people should be able to count on this as well. Maybe you could connect that to what uh, Radar said yesterday about having rural life. Um, the, the, it's not rural development, it's, it's having a possibility to yeah. live there. Exactly. Yeah. Another one that I think we heard yesterday as well is that rules made for big companies may be unsuitable and harmful to small actors. And uh, another thing, um, in Sweden I think we're especially confused about this because risk capital and venture capital is the same uh, word, it's risk capital, but it's not really the same. Risk capital is uh, when you 
pretty much buy a company and uh, count on selling it in just a couple of years and, and hoping for a big uh, return by doing this. Uh, while venture capital um, could be described as uh, yeah, giving a loan or investing in a company even though it's with a high risk and a high uncertainty that you'll, that you'll get the, uh, the money back. So, um, we think... I disagree. You don't agree with that explanation? Uh, could you... Let's see. Could you give a, a better explanation, Oscar? <coughs> risk capital is when all parties share the risk. It's for profit or loss. And venture? Venture is more specific. In a certain stage, the risk capital is the general uh, concept. Okay, yeah. Th this was one uh, discussion that we had at one of the local economy days. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the researchers claimed that venture capital would be more suitable for the, um, the rural economies than the kind of risk capital that um, Swedish public authorities are now um, creating for rural areas, which are there but not uh, used very much. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, some greetings from local areas. Um, yesterday we had a lot of work. Uh, some of the papers have taken, been taken off the wall and uh, the, the tools that we suggested, tools and instruments are still there. Um, and f for a couple of hours while some of us were in <coughs> the bar and uh, bowling and uh, so... Who, who won the bowling competition by the way? Uh, anyway, um, Hilleby was working uh, on trying to summarize the, uh, the findings. Uh, <clears throat> when I was here yesterday evening, I was reflecting on, uh, on intelligent systems. Do you know what is uh, characterizing intelligent systems? Two, two things. Uh, that there is a diversity, high diversity, and there is free interchange of information. That makes an intelligent system. And I think we, we approached that yesterday. We have a very high diversity in this room, and we, we try to get as much uh, interchange of information as possible. And uh, when I saw the, the results and reflected on the results, what we created yesterday, I said, it's really some good uh, patterns coming up. I also want to remind uh, about something which I think uh, Helena um, talked about. And uh, when we talk about local economy, um, I think we, should, we shouldn't think at it, at it as an object, as a, as a s steady state something, this is local economy. We, we shall think at processes. Helena was talking about glo the globalization trend and the relocalization trend. What is the movement? What is the, the direction? I think that is more interesting than we tend, because we tend to think about local, global, bum, bum. it's the movement and the direction which is interesting. Um, the, what we had on this wall, <coughs> Why should we strengthen local economies? Uh, I, I looked at your, your dots and count, uh, like with inspiration on that, I also summarized it. So it's a combination of what you think is important and, and on my way of organizing the pattern I see. So we shall do it to be prepared when the global economy collapses and we need to reduce vulnerability. Uh, there was some writing about peak oil, 
and about um, decisions taking in, uh, taken in other places to be local resilient. So that's resilience, which is a very a key point. And we shall do it to increase awareness about uh, our own ecological footprint, to reduce our environmental impact and foster responsibility towards humans, animals and nature. And this is about something about feedback. In a limited system, there is a better chance to get uh, feedback if we are doing something which is wrong. And that's one problem with the global system, that the feedback doesn't go to the person in charge. Um, we shall do it to strengthen democracy, possibilities, uh, um, to get possibilities to influence our everyday life, the decisions uh, for that, uh, to take local decisions, which we can do if we have local money, and this has to do with democracy and empowerment. Uh, we shall do it to strengthen our, the social human capital, trust, meaningfulness, qual quality of life, happiness and holis holism. So it's about meaning. Um, and all of these uh, points has to, do with, uh, has to do actually with resilience. Um, and goes very well together with, the, um, with complex systems theory and about resilience of a system. So that's what, why I thought this is, we are very intelligent together. We, we, we have this knowledge in us when we are working together. And you were surprised? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we shall do it to create diversity diversity on cultural level, social, financial diversity, biological diversity, a diverse labor market, and so on. Diversity is also a key point for resilience. And uh, we shall do it to increase innovativity and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, creativity is also a key point for a resilient system. And this was a... Uh, a a uh, nice one, I think. Uh, we shall do it to lower the pressure on the, the cities. That's also a good point. Okay, so that was the first question here. And then the second question here, it's what about uh, possibilities and challenges. What are the possibilities? And of course, one, a possibility is a challenge and vice versa, it comes together. So we should apply a true cost economy, have a 300 years perspective, that would be a possibility. We should focus at the social and ecological dimensions of economy. Uh, we should re uh, re recirculate resources locally, go from linear to, to circular and plugging the leaks. Uh, local currencies uh, is a possibility. Uh, questioning econom uh, economics of scale and ease the burden for small uh, scale co companies. That would do um, something good. Regulate import may be a way to strengthen local economies. Uh, to cooperate locally in cooperatives and community networks, that would be an important way to strengthen local economies. Community building based on engagement uh, for local service uh, would be one way. <clears throat> and to find substitutes for conventional banks. Uh, and to, to do more of the processing, value adding near the, the, the sources, for instance, the, the wood processing in the places where the, where the forest is. And a mind shift, which was written on many papers, uh, with examples of pro-rural, pro-entrepreneurial, and so on. So the cha challenge is low willingness, and there were a lot of dots, and that surprised me uh, a little bit. There is low willingness uh, um, 
to risk funding and local investment. And low consumer awareness and, that is a uh, and responsibility, that would be a possibility to, to uh, increase the consumer awareness responsibility. Government's regulation, uh, there were not so many examples, I think that we could find much more examples, public procurement, small-scale food processing, that were, were the examples given. Global competition, of course, is a challenge. Um, building trust and involvement and an open and welcoming attitude in the global community, uh, local community. That is, of course, an uh, important challenge also. And that the energy is too cheap. Okay. And for the third question, which is still on the wall, I hand over to hmm. Thomas. Uh, well, this is something we're going to work on more today as well, and we're going to see more examples. Uh, and you can't see them from where you're sitting because there were so many examples, which is good, but I, just to give you some of them, uh, to start off with, there was somebody writing that we need to know more about the local economy, so you need to have the tools like local economic analysis. Um, there were suggestions to use crowd equity, partnership, uh, or something called Andels Bewegelsen 2.0, I don't know much about it. Crowdfunding, uh, that uh, is a very broad term, but it could be used for um, it's very often related to something where you give something away, a gift, uh, uh, and don't demand anything in return, so to speak. You have tools like crowd culture, uh, which is where they try to combine um, uh, government money with uh, uh, persons who want to invest in cultural as aspects, cultural activities. Uh, you have credit guarantee associations, local savings banks, savings accounts for local investments, like Big Despar, Big De Conto, support, uh, support to saving. Uh, somebody has written about possibilities to, to have um, stiftelse. Foundations. foundations, thank you. Um, bank foundations, parting uh, together with banks, uh, uh, work, working locally. Uh, consumer advance payments to local producers is also a possibility. Pay in advance so that you have, can afford uh, to invest all, everything that needed to, to plant and to seed and so on. Um, community supported agriculture, for instance, when you, uh, consumers actually can buy a farm and employ a farmer, uh, which means you sort of solve one of the problems of uh, capital. Collaboration between lo local retailers and producers, uh, microcredits as a, as a possibility. Liability insurance uh, was, has been, a, for me, a new thing coming up where you have a possibility to, to actually go to an insurance company to, uh, to insure some, um, yourself against possible risk problems. It could possibly also be a, an opportunity for us to lower the risk when we want to attract consumers to invest. Maybe, I don't know. I find it interesting. I'm a little bit curious about it. Um, using local currency as time banks, knowledge banks, uh, which would be um, economic tools, but not non-monetary tools. Uh, co uh, cooperatives as a solution, how to organize things, or, or uh, businesses with restrictions for profit disposals, also a way of organizing yourself locally. Um, getting local people to invest in local projects for the good of the local community. Uh, taking care of the commons, uh, which might relate to what Eleanor Ostrom, the, the Nobel Prize winner, uh, uh, discussed how important it is to actually have a true access to, to um, be, actually be able to, to manage the area around you, to have the right to, to take decisions. And um, another suggestion were leader type measures, um, leader then representing all the, the different uh, characteristics of the leader, leader approach. Those were the, uh, the suggestions from yesterday. Oh, and all oh, those were suggestions on tools for the local. Then this would be suggestions on instruments uh, then that could be used from, uh, from a government level to support the local. Uh, for instance, tax, the tax system can be used in many ways, uh, like nat natural resource use taxes or tax deduction for working capital. If you invest somewhere, you can reduce it from your tax bill. Um, reflow of nature resources, like the wind company we saw, maybe you can have a, a government regulation on that. A pay tax, a uh, sorry, special tax and legal systems for rural areas, uh, which is sometimes applied. For instance, you can have a lower cost for employing young people in rural areas, or 
pay tax according to how many months you live at a place. We discussed that yesterday. I think there is a Finnish idea, at least, on the table on how to, to make that possible. Um, pilot municipalities for development in, of services. That is, uh, the government enhancing projects to, to, to find new solutions, using government money for, for yeah. enabling new solutions uh, or innovations in service sectors. Uh, or you can use the, the um, revolving funds, like recirculating EU money, like we have in the Swedish context, the Almi Invest. I, I'm, I'm not sure how that is in... I think there is something also in the Baltic countries using revolving funds. And you have the, a, a very important tool, except for taxes and regulations, is uh, that the public is actually a very strong consumer, so you need to look at the rules for public procurement. Are those the... Are those the final words? <laughs> no? <laughs> we will be talking more, of course. Uh, we will have four cases, especially on, three cases, especially on the floor, and one instrument, the CLLD. Uh, we will have the crowd equity, the local capital lösning, we will have the uh, micro funding. And we will have uh, how to, you can organize locally in a, in a limited uh, shareholding company. Uh, but. Um, micro, micro funding, yeah. Well, no, it, well, it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then after, we'll have a session now with a panel of, of four. And after that, we will have some kind of interactive. The instrument will be the CLLD, which is not, wasn't mentioned. Mm -hmm. So this may be, uh, for you as well as for me, a quite confusing overview. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and as you heard, we are going to get some more information of some of this. Uh, but the session directly after will be uh, inspired by open space technology. And that means uh, what you find interesting you propose for a, a, a session, a group discussion. So the idea is, those of you who want to know more about this, for, that sounds interesting, I would like to know more about it. You are going to form um, parallel uh, sessions and uh, learn from each other. Yeah. So think about that when we now... Can I then please, um, on the floor, uh, invite Leo, Ulla, and Anna, and Maria. And the rest of you, just have a chit-chat on what you heard so far from the summary. While we arrange things up here. Can we try somehow find a better way of, of ventilation? Because there's no air in here, is there? Yeah. Uh. 
the Please, uh, you can spread out. You don't have to stand on each other's toes. <laughs> uh, I know this light is very strong, but anyway. And I stand in front of you. Uh, can you please just tell us a little bit of who you are and where you work? Uh, Maria. I, I'm Maria Alsved, and I work at the Ministry for Rural Affairs, and I work in the Rural Development Programme. And my name is Anna Haraldsson Jensen. I'm here for, as I am a board member of Röstunga Utvecklings AB SVB. Uh, I am Ulla Herlitz. Uh, no. You can hear me. You. Was it okay? I'm Ulla Herlitz and uh, I live on Styrsjö. It's a small island on the west coast of Sweden. And I work at All Sweden Shall Live with issues about local economy. And uh, I'm Leo Padazakos. I'm the only Swede here, as you can see. And uh, I live in uh, the countryside, in a place called Huddunge, in the middle of Hebi commune, just outside Uppsala. And uh, I'm here today to talk about local capital. Great. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to ask you a question to, uh, to all of you to reflect on what you heard now. Was there anything that surprised you or anything that you sort of came to your attention is more interesting than something else or any, any reflections you made from the this sort of back casting? Maria? That's a quick one but anyway. Uh, well, um, we me? I, I was thinking about uh, the gender infrastructure in, in the uh, rural areas and about the tax system and how difficult it is. <laughs> we think it's easy, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think I'm still metabolizing the discussions we had yesterday, both at dinner and also the... the but I think it's, um, it's, it's very broad. And, and uh, as I'm operating on a very local and regional level, uh, it's, it's good to see the, the um, bigger trends and, and, and set, try to set what you're doing into a a context. Uh, so that's, I think, I'm, I'm still working on it, sort of. Yeah, try, <laughs> Ulla. Um, uh, it's amazing that it's so many ideas about uh, what to do, and uh, um, I think we have to, to uh, discuss how to take these issues further on uh, and just uh, uh, not leave them. <laughs> Here, uh, how can we cooperate to, to bring uh, these ideas further on? Mm -hmm. Many small steps. You, you should have one microphone each. It, the sound, where, where are you? Sorry. No, he's, not. he's sleeping. He's sleeping. Sounds great. Here we go. I have a microphone. Yeah, you so you can have one each. Uh, and Leo? My usual comments. We talk a lot in Sweden. I don't know if you have noticed that. We are extremely good in planning, and then we plan some more. I like to see results. I, very good what I saw, I didn't understand anything to tell you the truth. And that bothers me, because when I come somewhere, I want to go from there and know I have something in my hands. Well, from this presentation, I have nothing in my hands. So, that's my... It seems like you're, you're very, very close to Ulla's uh, there. We need to we take always, it, we too, we, to take we are like brothers further. and sisters. <laughs> uh, but, and that's good. And the, the reason why you are standing here, the, the four of you, <laughs> the three of you, is because you did something um, in, in different aspects. Uh, I told you yesterday that Reda is the, maybe the father of rural development in the Nordic countries, or the grand old man. Ulla is the grand old lady of local capital in Sweden, I would say. And I think she, she's worth an applause for that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, uh, and, and so I would like you to, to uh, give us some presentation of what you've actually done. Anna, should you take the floor, please? Shoot. Yes, so this is, um, as I said, I, I live in Röstånga, in Skåne, which is in the southern part of, of, of Sweden. I didn't bring a map, but if you, if you know Sweden, then you know the southern parts. And in the northwest of the southern parts uh, is, is Skåne, or, or Röstånga. 
And this is a, an, a house or an, a house, I don't know, a state that we bought in November. It's, a, it's the former um, train station in, in Rostonga. And, and we uh, bought the building, we as in a community development company, with the limited, uh, I wrote it up, limited restrictions for profits disposal. It's a SVB bolag uh, in Swedish. Uh, and we renovated it and now it's a restaurant. Uh, we don't own the restaurant, but we own the building <coughs> itself. And it's, um, it opened in, in, in April, but it's uh, very successful. We also have renovated an um, art exhibition hall and we've built a small skate ramp and we're working on uh, uh, local care uh, from, a, from a user perspective. Um, but Röstonga, um, yesterday when we talked about uh, local economy, uh, at one of the groups we were talking about it as if it was separate from, uh, from the community. And for me it's, it's, uh, it's very, um, it's uh, always based in the community. And this is Röstonga. This is, uh, now it's only, only a, a picture, it's only a, a part of a presentation, but it's, um, there are lots of small businesses involving tourism. There are lots of associations, organizations, um, and, and it's a very vivid uh, community. And that is the setting in which we're trying to um, strengthen the local economy. We always have to consider, or, and, and, and um, we always have to uh, uh, consider the community as a whole uh, and, and build trust. Because uh, um, I, I think I see, consider uh, trust, and not only I, but social capital and trust is the, is the key for, uh, for a, a vivid uh, local economy, especially if you talk about it long term. And the method model that you choose uh, must consider uh, trust and the social capital uh, in order to be long term. So you, you strengthen and, and, and build trust. Um, this is what has happened now. It's uh, that I'm one of 400 shareholders of the, of the local business uh, owning the restaurant and the art exhibition hall and, and the future elderly home. Um, and that is a, a strength uh, for the local economy, but for the conventional economy. 400 shareholders is uh, kind of tricky and not very wanted. Um, uh, and I see that um, what we've built is, is a financial platform uh, that is suitable in the setting that we are in. And I think it differs where you are in, in the Nordic countries or where you are in Sweden, where you are in Skåne. Uh, how you build and what you do, but it's important to activate capital where you are, all kinds of capital. Social capital is the most important in, in, in uh, my opinion, human capital, but also, uh, of course, financial capital. Um, and I think it's important to, that you see that you, you build a local financial platform where you invest locally and you match it up, the local, the capital that you've got uh, with um, other financial capital from other sources that is uh, that fits uh, your aim with the, the local agenda. <coughs> it could be a conventional bank, it could be um, um, another partner, but it's important that you that you match it up, or it's a, it's a it, it's a, um, it's easier to match it up, perhaps. Um, and um, and I think it's important that you take care of the local engagement, um, uh, especially when you talk about um, public future programs, for example, Landsbygdsprogrammet. I think it's very important that you consider uh, the local in uh, engagement and its logic, because it does not always or ever <laughs> follow the logic of, of, of all programs. If you've got a program for communication, you've got a pro program for infrastructure or a program for something else, that logic is not uh, built in, in, in structures, in silos like that. <clears throat> uh, 
And you cannot say to a person that wait until 2015 with that idea, <laughs> because you have to take it, you have to capture it um, while it comes. And I think in, in that, um, the local economy is um, a platform where that can absorb other ideas that aren't seen by the conventional systems. Um, and for the public authorities, uh, both on national scale and, and regional scale, I think it's important that we ensure good and stable conditions for community development companies um, and establish financial sources that rec recognize the, logic, uh, the local logic, uh, building, strengthening trust. That sometimes when you do, um, when you got um, money in risk capital, for example, conventional capital, it's not uh, really, um, it's not considering the fact, uh, <laughs> the, um, the importance of trust locally. And I think it's important that, that there are capital that matches up the logic of the local level. Uh, if that makes sense, <laughs> because it does in a way, but it's uh, not always easy to explain. Um, and we're talking about risk capital earlier. I think it's important that we find risk-willing capital. And I think it comes from multiple sources uh, that can be matched up with, with the local capital. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very well. We'll come back to some questions. Uh, yes. Keep your microphone. Um, uh, Ulla, from a, from a totally different level, um, you've done different things in different uh, settings. Please, Me, take the floor. Mm, I'm here. Wherever you want. You have your presentation? You want uh, your PowerPoint? Yeah, it's okay. on. Thanks. I get help from him. Yeah. Um, yesterday, um, Helena and David, uh, they gave us the very big picture of the global problems and the solutions. And uh, Anders from the ministry, um, he was more hands-on with problems uh, as distance to the market and lack of the infrastructure and difficulties to access capital. F facing these problems at local level, um, the uh, rural communities, uh, the village action groups there, they try to find solutions. And uh, some of the groups, uh, uh, they uh, uh, really want to change this big picture at the global level and locally. But others, uh, they participate in these local development work because they want, uh, for instance, to save the school. They want to get better access to the broadband or they need a petrol station in the village, or they want to start a business. And uh, these activities, they are made uh, to keep and to develop uh, the local community uh, for the inhabitants living there. Uh, and uh, uh, um, it, it, it doesn't uh, matter which uh, uh, approach you have, but the local development, uh, all the activities and uh, the enterprises, they need to be financed and they need capital. But they need different types of capital, depending on what they are doing. Um, so, uh, in um, <coughs> uh, All Sweden Shall Live, uh, we made a handbook for uh, local financing, uh, as you saw before. Uh, it uh, is available in English in, uh, on the homepage, and uh, of course, we have a Swedish edition too, which you find <coughs> out there. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, if you look at all these tools that we have found that people use when they uh, want to develop uh, their community, uh, there are three levels of tools. Uh, first, uh, uh, if you are going to finance, 
uh, specific, a single um, ac <coughs> activity or enterprise. It's very common uh, to start a co-op and to uh, uh, have capital from shares. But, um, and, and that's uh, rather uh, <coughs> common with, uh, in the whole of Sweden to work with in uh, this way. Uh, the next level if, is if you want to um, uh, work with local development in a broader perspective. Uh, you want to start uh, or, and support enterprises and social uh, services and so on. Uh, then uh, uh, the local action groups uh, perhaps do, as uh, in Anna's example, uh, start a limited company uh, <coughs> with shares. But uh, the third and uh, uh, the, the most uh, challenging level is uh, how to build uh, a local financial structure. Uh, that's the, the most difficult uh, thing to do. Um, but um, as you saw, Ulva uh, showed an example from a Sparkassa, it's a savings association. And uh, that's a, a type of uh, local financial structure that uh, could develop more in the future. Um, in, in this uh, Sparkassa, uh, you are working only with um, uh, the real economy. You are uh, lending and borrowing money between the members. Uh, it's like a small bank. Um, yeah. uh, I want to highlight one of uh, the tools uh, that uh, is described in this uh, handbook for local financing, and that's the micro fund, micro fonden. Um, uh, and um, as I said before, uh, the activities and, and uh, enterprises need uh, different kinds of capital. And uh, uh, one of the, the most um, um, uh, common uh, way to get capital for your uh, activities uh, is to uh, go to the bank and ask for a loan. And that is really problematic uh, in Sweden for uh, many of the small enterprises in the rural areas. Uh, it's not only that you don't have a bank uh, close to, to your place, it's also that uh, uh, the bank uh, need a, a guarantee for the loan. And as, as you know, the properties in rural areas, they are not as... Uh, uh, high valued as uh, uh, the properties in the nearby regional city or in Stockholm, for instance. Uh, so you, so uh, uh, the enter uh, enterprises, they uh, often uh, don't have um, the guarantee needed for the bank loan. And the idea uh, with this, um, it's a project that we are now going to start in all Sweden shall live, uh, uh, to um, start up uh, micro, regional micro funds uh, to uh, uh, support uh, activities and entrepreneurs and uh, enterprises in the rural areas with uh, guarantees uh, so they can go to the bank and have a loan with this guarantee. Um, we think it's, it's uh, so, some companies need uh, uh, risk capital and uh, many uh, companies they really um, need uh, a normal bank loan and that is also um, uh, the Companies Association in Sweden, Företagarna, they do inquiries every year uh, among uh, the members uh, what, what are the biggest problems uh, to find capital. And uh, the answer is uh, um, the, the guarantees. It's uh, more problematic for uh, each year to 
uh, to, to meet the banks uh, 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 yeah, that they want the guarantee. Uh, and these regional micro funds, uh, uh, they will be connected to the national micro fund for uh, social economy and local development, uh, which is an uh, association uh, that uh, all Sweden shall live, the uh, cooperative movement companion, and Ecobanken um, has set up uh, earlier. And um, uh, this is uh, statistics from the Swedish uh, Board of Statistics uh, about uh, how much money <laughs> we have in the society. Because uh, uh, you can, uh, it, it's very easy when you work with local development that you uh, uh, want to have uh, subsidies for your work. And, uh, uh, but, but um, uh, when you look at uh, the savings uh, in Sweden, uh, we count that each uh, person per capita, we have 128,000 Swedish crowns on a uh, bank account. And we also uh, have shares and, uh, and uh, money in funds for uh, 112 thousand Swedish crowns and that's a lot of money and you can just uh, count if you have a small community with 500 uh, persons there uh, think how much money you have in your local area and the challenges for the future is how to recirculate this money that we already have and I think that's a very uh, crucial thing to get this uh, sustainable society that we all are looking for. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Ulla. <laughs> uh, Ulla, I have, I have a, so you're actually pointing to the fact that we need to sort of have tools to, to lower risk for people so that they actually want to invest this money, or part of this money at least, uh, in local. Uh, I, would, I would argue possibly that this microfund is, is an instrument rather than a tool, but it's a, an instrument that can be used also for the local actors, right? Uh, because it's a, it's, it's a national initiative, which I think is very important. Uh, we're going to try to do, uh, put a movie on, and we don't have our sound technician here, so we have, we're trying to work on it. Sorry? Hey, there we go. Uh, the, um, uh, I was wondering one thing, Ulla, while we're discussing. You were saying that the, the, the challenge here, Ulla, uh, sorry, the challenge here is about the, re building this financial structure. Yeah. Um, and then you're looking to the farmers who are, are forming their savings account. And you're also saying that the most important thing is the trust aspect. So maybe w when we talk about building financial infrastructure or structure, we're talking about social infrastructure. We maybe spend too much time on the financial side when we really have to work more on the social side because that's how it sort of it, how the, we come from talk to action. It's by getting together and creating that kind of association. Or please, let's talk about the impact a small business. Okay, we're. <laughs> Of course, there's a connection between the, uh, the, the, the social and the capital. Mm. But uh, in, in, uh, wh when we uh, discuss uh, with, with people uh, working and, and acting in the s social uh, sector, they say, oh, we need capital. And when we are talking uh, about um, money issues, it's all, always coming up that, oh, we should talk about the social. But of course, they are connected, and you need both trust and, and money. Yeah. Trust and money and the right tools to be able to, to work. One of the, one of the uh, tools that is also described in the handbook and, and which is innovative in its kind, I would say, is to when a, a local uh, company wants to work with raising capital, 
they find themselves maybe possible to do that once or maybe twice. They can raise capital to a certain end, buying a, a house or so. But if they want to go on working with more uh, and more uh, support to, to entrepreneurs, they need, of course, tools to handle all those contracts or to handle <coughs> all those shareholdings. And uh, Leo, you started uh, some years back to reflect on that, uh, based on a project you had on... on uh, yes. Please, take the floor. That was the first time he said that. So, for many years ago, I came to Sweden. I came 2004. I'm Greek from the beginning. So, I started a project. I live on the countryside, as I said. I started a project with the name Entrepreneurs Fabrician, or E-Factory. And we helped 800 companies during three years. We got 23 million crowns, roughly 2.5 million euros. From these 800 companies, um, it was approximately 350 which started anew, and 222 were still left for, uh, it was May 2012. In this project, we saw the need of money, seed money or risk money. So we started this project that we call now local capital or crowd equity, and I'll show you how it works a little. Just want to say that it's more or less what Anna and her people are doing. We just took that concept, if you might say so, I didn't know Anna then, but it's the concept that Anna is using. We just packaged it, and we gave it a legal infrastructure, and we gave it a web platform that is crowd equity funding platform. And this is a very beautiful package that we call it an ecosystem that you can take and apply it in different situations and it's agnostic, it's financial instrument agnostic. We have been doing it in, in such a way that it adapts depending on where you put it. Today, we have sold it to the innovation sector. The Vesteros Science Park is the first pilot. And you see Ule, who's sitting down there filming. He is the CEO of the local capital here in Ore. And we have another local capital in Gotland. Uh, we also have been funded by Magnus and his people from Jürbrugsverket to spread this around Sweden. Right now, we talk with another 10 or 11 countries to put this instrument in place. Let's see how it works a little very fast. And I promise you, I'll keep time. Let's talk about the impact a small business has on a community. It provides jobs, allowing employees to support their families and buy from other local businesses. It can also sponsor community teams and events, increase tax revenues, supply other local businesses, and the list goes on. Overall, one small business makes a huge difference to the... ...economy and the community. But what if a business couldn't get funding to ever open or expand? You see, it's actually really hard for a small business to get a bank loan. And getting the money somewhere else is nearly impossible. So really, a lot of small businesses can never expand or even get started. Maybe it's time we rethink this system. What if there was a way for us to join with potential small businesses to invest in our communities ourselves? With Crowd Equity, now there is. Crowd Equity has created a platform that enables you and your community to come together to fund local businesses. Here's how it works. Your community forms a local investment company. Then a small business can present its plan to that LIC. If the LIC believes that the business plan is solid and would better the community, it opens a campaign to raise funds. Here's where you come in. You can invest directly in the company by purchasing one of their value certificates. And when you do, you get access to special perks like coupons and discounts until the company pays you back. Yeah, when they start making a profit, they pay you back along with a predetermined premium. The real payback though is so much more than money. It's a more connected, safe and prosperous community for today and for the future. Learn more about how you can join with local businesses at crowdequity.com. That's it. Thank you. No. So, you see, this is not different from what Anna does, and this is not different from what Ulla wants to do. But the thing is that we've done it. We are here. We can sell it, or we can give it away. We are not here for the money. We believe in changing the today's situations. I don't like the today's situation. 
I don't like to send my kids off to live a life owing banks from when they born till when they die. So we would like you to consider what we've done. That's why I want to show you a little slide just to highlight the differences between That's all right. I'll find it. So, so what we do in your area could be a little community, it could be a regional place, a region. You build a local capital company. This is a public company. In Sweden, public companies can address the, the public with financial instruments. It is very important that it is a public company. I don't know how Anna handles that, but it could be that if you want to go out to the public to... Do you have a public company? You have an SBV. SBV solves that as well. SBV also can handle public uh, emissions. So what happens is we have a financial instrument, and this financial instrument can be whatever. It can be virtual stocks if we address uh, an axiblog, an incorporation. But what it does, and what is very important, we take break apart the obligations against the investor with the obligation against the investment object. That means that here you can promise things that <clears throat> come from the performance of this company without owing any stocks, neither here nor there. Makes it extremely flexible. You can do it in such a way that you can promise people money based on performance of this company, money based on the income of this company, or it's only fantasy that stops it. And it makes it very easy to take this financial instrument and put it in a, st in a stock market or a parallel stock market, as they call it, secondary stock markets, and sell it so you can buy his capital and his loan participating debenture in a company in Yemtland because you moved here and he moved somewhere else. So this is the basic infrastructure. I don't have the time to explain it in detail, and I know that you will wonder now what the heck is he talking about, but in any case, because of the eight minutes that we got from Thomas, I have to blame somebody, this is what I can give you. Now, what we've done also, we have done it in a way we can support Enhild Firma, it stands there. This is private companies, companies that are owned by one person. This wasn't possible before. But we can also support cooperatives, Ekonomiska Föreningar in Sweden. So this system, you can take it, you can build a local capital, and then everybody who wants to start a company, who wants to expand his or her company, anybody with an idea that could benefit the local community could be funded on the spot through the crowdfunding platform with the blessings of Finances per Kronum. Okay. Thank you very much, Jelo. I wasn't ready. Oh, sorry. I have two minutes for you. I thought no, you were. I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, I think, I hope that you can see. I'm not sure that we all understand all the technical details, but we will have uh, this afternoon, if some of you are joining the trip, you will be able to put questions both to our friends locally here, who has the local capital company, and to Leo. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I did have two minutes more, and I wanted to ask. I mean, I took the less time from everybody, right? I wanted to ask people, can I ask them? Thank well, you. If I say no, you'll ask them anyhow. So. Yes, that's it. So I wanted to ask everybody, uh, even if you don't understand it, do you, do you see what we are trying to do? Do you, do you realize the potential of crowdfunding when you do it, when you do it in a way that is combining the local community, more or less that what you do, Anna. Can, can, is it something that people, you people can relate to? Yeah? I don't think it's a problem today. It was two, three years ago when you started. Nobody understand what you were that doing. That was six years ago. Tom. That was six years ago. But anyway, I think today we see that we need uh, the tools to support the kind of companies that Anna is developing locally. Uh, we've seen those companies developing, we've seen those companies trying to also 
uh, help investors invest in other companies with the trust that they build locally, but they need the toolbox to be able to do this in an efficient way, um, I think. There's another thing, uh, please take, uh, there's another thing which I think is important and that we've touched upon a little bit is um, what kind of investments should you go for, Anna, Ulla, Leo? What, what kind of investment does um, support the local community and how do you know? Um, how I know? <laughs> Who? No, but I think it, it depends on the setting in the community. Uh, we've got... Um, we're not operating in all kinds of different areas. We're working with... Um, in in Röstonga, it's, it's, a, it's a community of a thousand people and we've got lots of buildings that are very worn down and we've got... Um, We've had, I, I won't go into it right now, but we've had issues with, with certain owners of, of uh, and still have, uh, of, of uh, buildings. So therefore, um, taking care of buildings and, and finding meaningful uh, um, that sort of businesses or, 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 or services that, that comes with is very important. It's something that is... is um, um, that everyone in the community and everyone who takes uh, who are stakeholders to the community can can agree upon. So we don't go in. We're not trying to uh, compete with um, the local grocery shop or, or in in other kinds of investment. But see my commercial uh, with the long term plus. But but it doesn't have to be. Um, uh, it's not. Uh, we're not going into areas that are that an, another commercial actor would go into, but sort of the one, the long-term... But you would be able to support another commercial actor? Uh, we could. And then you need some kind of tools so that you can handle... Yeah, definitely. I think this is very, very interesting. But well, I think it's important to find a local spokesman for what that... Exactly. Otherwise, it would be a, another tool that you're taking in. We have to be ambassadors mm -hmm. for the change we want to see somehow. That sounds like a quote I heard somewhere. Mm. Be the change you want to see. Mm. Uh, Ulla, in your, in your reflection on, on what kind of investments could actually this, uh, should it be open to anything or how do we handle the, the evaluation of the types of investments that you enter with the microloans? Mm. Uh, the rural areas are so different uh, and the needs are very different uh, throughout uh, of Sweden. Uh, if you... Uh, 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 have a village uh, close to a city, uh, they are not so keen on uh, working with uh, to start the new companies or enterprises. There the services uh, perhaps uh, will be more <laughs> uh, on the agenda. And so, so it, it mm. uh, and, and all um, types of investments <coughs> for different things, needs uh, different uh, type of capital and and uh, um, sometimes it's uh, very good with risk capital and sometimes we have bank loans and sometimes it's very good uh, just to have a, a limited company with uh, uh, shares, a lot of shareholders and uh, so, so it depends. <laughs> and, and, you, and, and you can, in, in the, this handbook for, for local financing, you, uh, there. Uh, is also a step to, to, to step <laughs> way how to uh, uh, find what type of organization and financial model is the best for, for the purpose. So, Leo, in, there was a long discussion here at Nora, I know, with the local company, the, the local power, so to speak, in how do we evaluate the kind of companies that we should enter as Ore Local Capital? <clears throat> but that's the thing, we don't have to. Um, I answer the first question first. Local capitals don't need to know anything. The only thing they need to know is what the people want. We just say, if the people want it, we support it. You see, that's the thing. We don't need to know. No. You know, do you know? Yeah, but the locals need to know, right? These are the locals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you know, guys? If you know, we help you. You see the difference? It's from, out, from, from, from under and up. So that's the, the first thing. Now, what we do as local capitalists, the only thing we need to do, we have a due diligence process built in in the, in, the, in, the, in the web platform. 
So, Could you explain that due diligence? Yes, it's a Feratox Besikni. We, we call it as a company inspection. So we know who the person is, who she is, if she is, um, I would say, is she capable of putting this off? Has she had financial problems? You know, we, we go into details. The kind of work that banks the do. The kind of work that banks do, or probably Anna does, you know, in some way, looking at how the entrepreneurs are. I don't know if you do that. That's the kind of, of thing. So we have built-in inspections, in the, but we don't decide. It's you who decides. It's you who put your money in that decide if this company will be promoted or not. So we are looking now into a tool that can be used in very many places in Sweden. Uh, we have many different tools. And uh, Maria, from the government level, uh, from your level, you're on the deciding level, right? <laughs> uh, the uh, CLLD, the new tool that is an instrument for, from the Rural Development Programme in the coming pr programme period, <coughs> how can that be used to support these kinds of measures? Well, I, I think uh, that within the CLD, uh, these uh, tools, can, you can work with anything in this uh, CLD that you have project support, so you can, uh, you can try methods, you can build knowledge, you can find corporations, and it could also be about these things, of course. Uh, the, the CLLD is a new terminology for us, community-led local development. It replaces more or less the leader approach. Yes, the CLD is an is a instrument. It's in the, in the coming period of, of the structure of the EU funds. And uh, it's, uh, today we have a leader and it's kind of similar to leader. You're going to use the leader method in the CLD. And CLD stands for community-led local development. And it's, uh, it should, as leader, have a clear bottom-up approach. It should be, be run by uh, local action groups, which is the same today. Uh, and it should also have a, a core in this, is the local development strategy, that you develop a strategy for your area, and uh, that you take actions within the strategies. Uh, and the CLLD today, is used in the rural development program and in it's obligatory in the coming period as well as have at least 5% of the EU financing going to the CLLD. But it's also open for other funds this, pe uh, this period, as this coming period. So you could use money from the regional fund, possibly, also yes. in the CLLD. Yes, from the social fund and the maritime fishery funds mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then you have a multi-fund solutions. Mm -hmm. so, and, um, I've, as far as I understand, do you think that um, this tool could be used to, as well to become a financial intermediary? That if you form this CLLD locally, they could actually also act and support business? Or is it still restricted not to support business? Well, uh, that's, that's not decided yet. We, we're in the middle of forming the CLD and every member state ha can form it within the regulations, of course. And the regulations, well, they are open for, um, even for financing enterprises. But in Sweden, we haven't had that uh, this period, and, and we're in the middle of discussing whether to have it or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, we who have been working in the rural area should, should be able to give ourselves a, a good applause because leaders become so successful that EU wants it to be used in all over the, the place, also in the country, also in the cities. Mm. That's why they are sort of widening the perspective and using a new name because leader is so close to the rural program. So now they want a new name, or well, that's my interpretation. So they can use it also in cities. Um, so local development could be done also in cities, of course. Mm. Uh, reflections from, from your side on each other's presentations or the discussion that we've had so far? Uh, I would put a question <laughs> to Maria uh, about the CLLD and you said it, uh, it, um, you could give 5% of the total budget, uh, yeah, EU budget. And uh, I've been working uh, for 10 years to uh, um, w w uh, look, looking at uh, the rural programs and the, the leader and uh, 
evaluation at EU level. And uh, uh, I know that there is a baseline uh, that you have to take 5%, but a lot of other countries, uh, they, they put more money in these uh, uh, instrument le leader and, C, uh, and uh, CLLD is going to, to, to take that position. Uh, um, have you uh, discussed to, uh, to um, uh, let more than 5% of the budget go to this uh, instrument? And wh wh why are Sweden uh, at the bottom line there? <coughs> Well, this period, we have had more than 5% this period. We have, I think it's almost 7% of the budget. But, uh, and we are discussing the budget, but we are not uh, ready for it. We, we know that we have a lower EU budget in, in Sweden for the Rural Development Programme. And uh, that will also affect the CLD, of course, and there will be much more priorities, what we can do. But then we also have the other funds, Prob maybe uh, we, we're not finished with that either, but there are interesting. There are a, a huge interest from the other funds to take part of CLD. So, we, so if uh, we can uh, make it administrative um, possible, then we might have a multi fund with four funds in Sweden, and and then there we have additional from the regional fund, social fund, and fisher fund. Uh, but they, they are small, smaller budgets than the, we have in the Rural Development Programme. Do you have any comment on, uh, on our friend, uh, the, the comment here yesterday that we have too little regulations on the top level and too much on the local level? Can you promise us that we'll have less regulations in the next programme period? <laughs> <laughs> I can't promise that. But we're working with making it easier, of course. Uh -huh. That's what everybody wants, yeah. to make it easier. Uh, one thing that, that strikes me from yesterday's discussions and, and also today here is that when you talk about what we know, we need to know what we want locally. That comes first. We need to have a plan. We need to, to know where we want to head. The CLLD will also sort of advocate local stra development strategies that can also, of course, be applied more local than CLLD because CLLD will be quite high up. Um, there is something there which we, as if you're an economist, you would say it's economy of scope, looking to the left and to the right, rather than looking into the economy of scale, becoming bigger and bigger all the time. Uh, when you take an investment decision, it's not about if that company can survive only, but it's about what that company can bring to other companies as in incomes. That is part of economy of scope rather than economy of scale. And I think that is a lost concept in, in uh, economics, which actually could be used and maybe developed further. Um, any comments? Please. Yeah, we bring this back. That's, that's what local capital is all about. We call it slow equity. You don't have to care so much about how much money you're going to get back. Maybe the most important thing if this kind of service should exist. Or if your children can work in this company that you people just created. So it's very good, Thomas, that you say that. Thank you. Huh? It was the first time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Any comment? Uh, I was thinking about what Anna said earlier, that she said, well, the program are too narrow to fit in everything you want to do in Dröstonga. But I think you can have a broader scope on your strategy, and then you find different sources for financing. For even if you have a multi-CLD solution this time, Everything won't fit in anyway. It would be a broader scope, it would involve other actors, but you still might do things that won't fit into these programs, and then you will have to have a broader strategy and, and find other financial solutions. I, I think it's, it's super interesting that you carry your own agenda and not uh, building too much strategies around the programs because that they are only means to what you want to, or like the different the ways of, of attracting capital are only means to what you want to do. But the agenda must be locally set together with the stakeholders that you got uh, around. And I think it's important that you match the right idea with the right capital from a user's perspective, rather than thinking of, of, um, of, of, of the existing capital and, and trying to sort of uh, force your idea over in order to match uh, that capital. I think it's important to start with the idea, especially when it comes to local economy, because mm -hmm. otherwise you lose the trust 
and then you'll only be uh, Thomas and Ulla who's doing an investment, which is important, but it's not perhaps strengthening the local economy. That the the um, rings on the water. I don't know if you say that in English or if there is, but like the the um, the the good the good positive effects. Multiplying effects. Yeah, yeah, multiplying effects are, are could be so much bigger if you think of of um, of of. of uh, of, of matching the capital to to your ideas and what is important for you for for the community and also not thinking of so this is us and and that's the other guys around because that's not very realistic because we're living in 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 in, in a society where people move and, and and you do different things which is super important uh, so i think it's it has to be including processes and therefore i think it's very also interesting with the uh, models that you use, you attract capital also from, from other stakeholders, from people that have an interest in, 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 in the community uh, on a broader scale than, than just the ones that we've got uh, in the, that geographically close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th uh, let's give a hand to all our, our uh, friends up here.